Well, nothing gets me in the mood for Orgo like tacos al pastor. So today we're in the dining hall to cover the types of stereoisomers. You might recall that stereoisomers are molecules that have the same atoms and bonds, but different 3D arrangements of those atoms. In this sketch, we'll take a closer look at chirality, assigning chiral centers as R versus S. Let's dig in. Whoa! Someone has been sampling the edible fungus growing outside the dining hall. This member of the Cairo fraternity is trying in vain to line up, or superimpose, his left and right hands on each other to remind you of the concept of chirality. A chiral molecule is not superimposable on its mirror image, which means those mirror images will never line up perfectly on top of each other, no matter how you turn them. Kind of like how this bro's left hand will never be superimposable on his right hand, try as he may. If a molecule is chiral, it will have some special properties. For example, a chiral molecule will always have an enantiomer, but more on that later. And a chiral molecule is optically active, just like this guy is with those wide open eyes. More on that later too. So how do you recognize whether a molecule is chiral? Actually, the best way is to find out whether the molecule is not chiral. The property of being not chiral is called being achiral, and it's usually pretty straightforward to recognize. This lovely member of the alpha chiro or achiro sorority will help us out. Alpha chi members are notorious for their uncompromising makeup standards. Eyeliner, in particular, must be perfectly symmetrical. And as it turns out, achiral molecules are symmetrical too. This achiro sister is using the internal mirror in her purse to perfect her eyeliner because any molecule that has an internal mirror plane, meaning one half of the molecule is the mirror reflection of the other half, is automatically achiral. When you are looking for internal mirror planes in a structure, be sure you fill in any hydrogen atoms that haven't been drawn in. These can break symmetry. If a molecule is achiral, it's automatically optically inactive, which is why this perfectionist's eyes are closed. Okay, so what if we've determined that a molecule is not achiral, meaning that it is chiral? Well, that means your molecule is going to have an enantiomer, which we've represented with this kid wearing a Go Ants shirt. Enantiomers are just the mirror image of a chiral molecule, hence why this Ants superfan is looking at his mirror image. Enantiomers typically have identical physical and chemical properties, but they rotate plain polarized light in opposite directions, but more on that later. Anyways, since the mirror image of a chiral molecule is always non-superimposable, two enantiomers will also always be non-superimposable. Notice how this guy's mirror image isn't quite superimposable on his body because the lettering on the shirts doesn't match? If a chiral molecule contains chiral centers that can be labeled as R or S, in the enantiomer, every S in it will become an R, and vice versa. That's why ant's rock turns into antersock in this reflection. Now, how do you even determine if a molecule has a chiral center? and if that center is R or S. Well, I'm starving and someone mentioned Al Pastor, so let's load up at the taco station while we get the rundown. A chiral center is an atom bonded to four unique groups, sort of like this C-shaped spit is surrounded by four unique toppings, meat, guacamole, salsa, and cilantro. Having four different groups around a carbon atom makes it so those groups can be arranged in two different possible 3D orientations without changing the connectivity of the molecule. A compound with multiple chiral centers will have two to the n possible stereoisomers, where n is the number of chiral centers it has. The two in that formula comes from the fact that each chiral center will have two possible 3D arrangements. The R and S system lets us differentiate between those two possible arrangements at each chiral center. We'll get to how to assign priority in a moment, 
But for now, know that our isomers have their substituents go from high to low priority in a clockwise direction, or to the right if you start at the top of the molecule. S isomers have their substituents go down in priority to the left or uh, left in a counterclockwise direction. RS can be assigned by following a set of rules called the kahn ingold prelog rules. Let's take a closer look. In the best interest of the structural integrity of our taco, we want to put the heaviest material first. That means meat first, then guac, then salsa, and cilantro last. Notice the numbers marking the taco building priority of those ingredients? Similarly, the first thing to do when designating a molecule as R or S is to assign priorities to the atoms bonded directly to the chiral center based on atomic weight. To start, the atom with the highest atomic number is assigned number one for the highest priority. Then continue numbering the atoms in weight order, making the lightest atom four. If a chiral center is bonded to two atoms that have the same atomic number, like these two carbon atoms, assign priority to each atom bonded directly to those tied priority atoms. Whichever has the highest priority neighbor wins. Continue down the chain of each atom until the tie is broken. By the way, if you ever encounter a double or triple bond, for priority purposes, consider each atom as being bonded to two or three copies of whatever atom the multiple bond connects to. These dash browns are next to the low priority cilantro to remind us that when determining if a molecule is R or S, the lowest priority group must always be going back away from you, on the dash. If it's not, don't panic. Proceed with your RS assignment and we'll circle back to how to handle this later. Ah, we've got a taker at the taco bar. This culinary genius went from the meat to guac to salsa to assemble a structurally sound taco. Likewise, draw an arrow around your chiral center from priority one to two to three. Ignore number four, just like this kid is passing right over the cilantro tray, because why taint a glorious taco with soapy tasting leaves? If your arrow goes clockwise, which means it heads to the right from the top of the molecule, you're looking at an R chiral center. If it goes counterclockwise, heading to the left from the top of the molecule, you're looking at an S conformation. Just be careful that if you're thinking about right and left rather than clockwise and counterclockwise, you always consider the direction the arrow goes from the top of a molecule. An arrow that goes right from the bottom of the molecule will be heading counterclockwise, so it will actually be S. Now, getting back to those odd taco bar dash browns. What do you do if your number four priority group wasn't on the dash? Like, what if it's on the wedge coming out at you? Well, swapping any two groups at a chiral center creates a new chiral center with the opposite configuration to the original. In practice, that means you can just assign your arrow as R or S, just like normal. But the assignment you get will be exactly opposite of what it should be. So if number four is on the wedge and your assignment tells you the chiral center is supposedly R, the real chiral center is actually S. This girl getting ready to chow down on dash browns is hanging out far from the number four cilantro and walking around the taco bar in reverse to remind you to reverse your answer if number four isn't on the dash. Okay. Now that we are R and S pros, let's take a look at this restless diner to cover optical activity. He's twisting in his chair to symbolize optical rotation, which arises from the fact that chiral molecules have an asymmetric arrangement of differently polarized bonds. This creates asymmetric dipoles they can use to grab the plane of light and twist it a little bit. Think of the molecules as little magnetic hands. Any molecule or mixture of molecules that's able to do this is called optically active, which may be why this twisty chair diner is so wide-eyed. And the specific angle to which a molecule rotates plain polarized light is called that molecule's specific rotation. Finally, any chiral molecule by itself 
will be optically active. That's why the Twister is wearing a Cairo shirt. Are these kids racing in their chairs? Dolores the lunch lady is gonna raise hell when she sees this. But this race between twins and ants and antertees should remind you of the fact that a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers is called a racemic mixture. These enantiomers rotate plane polarized light exactly the same amount, but in opposite directions. And the racers are upping the ante by having a blindfolded, optically inactive race because racemic mixtures are optically inactive. The equal but opposite rotation of light in the 50-50 mixture of molecules cancels each other out, leading to no net rotation. All right, well, better wrap this up before Dolores rolls up and gives this crew an earful. But first, a quick rundown. Chirality is the property of having a non-superimposable mirror image. A pair of chiral mirror images is called a pair of enantiomers. The best way to tell if a molecule is chiral is to determine whether or not it is achiral. To do that, look for internal mirror planes. Many chiral molecules contain chiral centers, which are individual atoms attached to four different substituent groups. All chiral centers can be classified as R or S. To determine which, assign priority to the atoms bonded to the chiral carbon, giving the heaviest atoms the highest priority. Then draw an arrow from priority group one to two to three. If the arrow goes clockwise, the chiral center is R. If the arrow goes counterclockwise, the chiral center is S. If the lowest priority group is not on the dash, remember that your actual chiral center will have the opposite configuration, R or S, from what you assigned. Chiral molecules have the ability to rotate plane polarized light to a certain degree, called a specific rotation. This property means that any chiral molecule by itself is optically active. A 50-50 mixture of enantiomers, or a racemic mixture, however, will be optically inactive because enantiomers rotate plane polarized light to equal degrees, but in opposite directions. All right, well, this has been a whole lot of orgo and not nearly enough putting tacos in my mouth, so I'm gonna go change that. Thanks for stopping by.